All right, adventurers, we're back. It's still a nice and nice, cool morning, but uh, this brake job needs done today. So we're working on my 98 Honda Accord. And as you can see, I've already got it up on the jack stands and the wheel off. And which, for those of you want to take want to save time, that's a 19 millimeter to take your lug nuts off. Um, and right now, we're gonna have to come in here and see. Oh God, I can see grease everywhere. I'm guessing that's from a bad CV axle. Oh, look at all that grease. Yeah. Yeah, it's slinging grease up onto the dang thing there. So, but the real, the real question today is the brakes. I hope to God I still got both pads in there because it was making some hardcore grindy noises. And, uh, it didn't start, like, pulling to left or right or shaking. Well, I mean, there's some slight shaking. That rotor's fucked, but... We're going to take it all off today, and I'm going to show you all the procedure. So, first things first, we're going to get this caliper off. Or, yeah, caliper. So, we can show you the old brake pads and get this dang rotor off. Now, I believe... Oh God, if I remember right, I'm going to have to take some things apart, because I don't think these are just floaters. But I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But we'll see here in a minute. And I'll be back. Just give me a second to collect my thoughts. Alright, I'm back on the ground. And it is a 17 millimeter to take out your caliper bolts there. And then on right here for your bracket bolts, it looks like it's going to just be slightly bigger. Nope, nope. Both 17, so 17 for the caliper for the slide pin bolt, and then a 17 for the bracket bolt right behind there. And you should be good to go. Screwdriver, pry the pad, slide it off, set it aside, and we'll be back then. All right, I got the pads. That pressure relieved. Do this one-handed. Oh, all right. So it's just going to stay there, eh? So let's see. Pad number one. Oh. Come on, little buddy. You, you want to come out of there? Oh. Uh, about to disintegrate. Not terrible. Not the worst I've ever saw. Oh, goodness. Oh, here's the, here's the one that's going to be good. Oh, yeah. Oh, listen to that. Oh, wow. There's paper left there, buds. Jeez. I think that was... That was the grindy noise I heard. <laughs> oh. Bless you, Honda. God bless you, little Honda. Ah. Oh. You would not believe the terrible noises that were coming out of there. All right, so I'm not going to have to do a new guy here. So I'm going to get this bracket off. It's just two bolts, top and bottom here, and it pops off. And then I'm going to start fighting with this rotor, and I'll be back. Um, I just wanted to show everyone a trick, because these bracket bolts can and should be a bear to get off if you don't have an impact like me but i'm i'm a caveman so i'm gonna do it the hard way anyway because yeah you can get the bottom bolt but you can't get that impact in for the top bolt so it may as well just do it so what you do is you take an old box end wrench like that you put it like that on your on your uh your bracket bolt and i already broke this one but and then you just lift you see what it gets you it gets you that extra bit of leverage there. And yeah, you can get you a cheater bar, but if you can't find a cheater bar and you happen to have a wrench handy, that'll work too. All right, back to it. Okay, so the bracket bolts, or the bracket bolts are off and I got the bracket off. And now the rotor, um, it's, it's fairly well froze on there. 
because I looked at the new rotor, which it sometimes helps if you look at the new part. But as you can see, that round piece, the axle nut doesn't lock that in place and there's no threads in those holes so the wheel stud should just come off there's no air hammer or unnecessary nothing so right now see these thread holes on this new one you want to come over and get you some bolts and start running you in a couple bolts about that size and it'll slowly work that rotor off but in case you know my bolts don't work I've got the pry bar and the I'm not asking I'm telling hammer so we'll see what happens there and I'll be right back all right that there's a freshly cracked rotor took the I'm not asking I'm telling hammer and I turned the wheel all the way and locked it again so I could get a better angle on it and just uh, started going now that's not really too good there so I'm going to take it, give it a few more taps to kind of ease the tension and it should just fall right off. There you go. There's that. Now I'm going to clean everything up and put the new rotors on and I'll be back. All right. New, uh, new rotors on, caliper brackets on. I'm going to start installing the the caliper and the pads and I just thought I'd show you guys a comparison of a new brake pad versus an old one so this is a new brake pad and this is from the inside that receives more force from the rotor so it's gonna get ate up faster and that's why it has the little the squeaker here which um, is more of a grindy than a squeaky noise so as soon as you hear the grindy noise change your dang brakes because if not, then you get what you have here, which, <laughs> it's paper, it's paper. So, don't, don't do what I did. As soon as you hear the grinding noises, or hopefully before, change your pads. But, I'm going to put my pads in, make sure you've got your friction side towards the rotor, not your metal side. Trust me, it won't work good. Um, and then... Oh yeah, you're gonna use a big C-clamp, most generally, to recompress the piston on that before you can get it back in. But I'm gonna do all that and be right back. Okay, maybe I can get this shot without the rotor falling. And don't worry about that, that's axle grease. So, for those of you playing the home game and you're wondering how to get your piston compressed, safely without damaging your piston you take one of your old brake pads and you sandwich that in between your clamp and your piston and you start turning that guy like so and it'll apply equal pressure over the whole piston and it'll squeeze it back shut and you're good to go to slap that puppy on there okay so i'll be back when i get all that done okay y'all so I'm going to be a little more brief on the other side. I just wanted to show you all what was there. As far as the pads go. Come on, little guy. You know you want to come out of there. Okay. That one, low, but not bad. Now for the real, real thing I want to see. And that back one just separated right off. This is the guy I wanted. Oh. Wait for it. Oh, it's paper again. Hadn't quite started grinding, but it's paper. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that was real close to being metal to metal. So, change your brakes often, folks. Get them inspected often, at least. Don't do what I do. But, all right. We'll uh, come back here in a second for the outro. All right, so we're back on the rear brakes now because I decided this was so much fun I was just going to do all of them um, but they're a little different so you're going to need a, uh, a 12 12 millimeter for your bolts here 
And the reason I have a wrench is because this line banjo bolt guy here doesn't allow you to get a socket on it. So you got to get a wrench on it and turn it. And the little doohickey is just wanting to spin, so I just threw a crescent on that real quick. But now I'm going to get these bolts out and be done with it. And then the back caliper bolts on the back of this are actually a 14 millimeter on the back. So we're going to get all that taken apart and I'll be back. I see these screws here, but I don't think I should be worried. I think they're still floating calipers, but we'll see. Okay, so I got that guy off. and Remember to release your e-breaker. You're going to have just devil of a time getting that off. Don't ask me how I know. So anyway, here's what you've all been waiting for for the rears. Let's see what we get. Ooh. Ooh, that was close. That was real, real close. And for the insides, damn. We are almost to grindy status. So these needed done too. Thank goodness this isn't such a big job. So once you get this set back, you can access the bolts back here, take this off, hopefully pop the rotor off easy, and I'll be back once I do that. All right, it is now day two of this job. Not that you guys would know that, but I'm telling you anyway. So these are rusted in, and before I went just full bore on them and started drilling and extracting and stuff. I went down to the parts store and made sure I could get extras first, thank goodness. So I got some extras, then I watched another video of another guy on the YouTubes and he had this thing that's called an impact screwdriver set that I went down to Harbor Freight and bought. So hope you got a Harbor Freight in town. Um, Cause this is about to make my life a whole lot easier. I hope. Um, but that's where I'm at. So it's morning of day two. Cause I didn't want to deal with all that and try to disable my Honda overnight. Cause I still had to promise my little girl I'd take her to the park and we still had to go to the store for dinner stuff. So yeah, day two, sometimes you just got to postpone cause of life stuff, but I'm going to try that and we will see what happens. Okay. So we're back and I had to go and get my little propane torch and I put some heat to them for a second because um, as you can see I, uh, I did an oopsie so oh one tip though in doing these brakes before you take all this apart keep your parking brake engaged and break these screws loose before you disengage your parking brake and take off your your caliper and your pads and all that. It'll make this a whole lot easier. You won't have to jam a crowbar in there like I, like you've seen I was doing. Um, but yeah, it'll just make your life a whole lot easier. And let me zoom in on this. You can totally see they got all boogered up, but once you see even the slightest gap around the edge, hit it with some stuff and let it sit and then hit it again. And with one of these things, it made your life a whole lot easier. Where are you? Okay, so rotor's on, and so you want to get your pad or your your pads and your your stuff done next. But you'll notice you can't just normally compress this caliper. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get something wedged in there, and you're going to have to twist this caliper while you're pushing. So you're going to do a twist and push motion. And it should get it all the way in and you want to get it just lined up um, with the top of the, the caliper, you know, get it flush like it needs to be. So there's that little tech tip. Don't, don't sit there like an idiot for a couple minutes squeezing the hell out of it. You know, just don't do that like I did, okay? Okay, so what I ended up going and finding was just this old blunt chisel here from my rock hound and stuff and it fit right into that wedge and it turned it perfectly in now just got to put my bracket back on put everything together and i'm good to go okay so we've got everything all put back together 
and I was just going to put the wheel on when out of practice I decided to check my tire and I found a little piece of metal in it so you know while you're doing this job just rotate your tires and check them make sure there's no metal in them these tires are probably too low to go get them fixed at a tire shop I mean I know they are I can I can see what condition they're in but oh well until I get new tires that's it is what it is but I'm gonna throw a plug in this real quick and then get on to the other side okay so the driver's side went a lot easier on the rear so basically lock your e-brake take your two screws out unlock your e-brake do the whole procedure again you're good to go now we're gonna do the reveal for the pads on this side oh those are those are pretty thin and uh, for the inside oh wowzers almost to the metal like fractions of an inch from that metal <laughs> all right well i'm gonna button this side back up and do an outro all righty brand new brakes on the front brand new brakes on the back i'm going to torque my back wheels because i already torqued my front ones yesterday and it's important to torque your wheels i know people out there watching this might not think it is but when you get done doing a job like this and you go to put your tire on you accidentally snap a wheel stud that's when your bad day really starts so torque your wheels i usually do about 85 pounds for a car this size or foot pounds excuse me but that should do it for today. We're going to go wash this little animal now and give it her a test drive, see how she runs. But yesterday the front brakes performed flawlessly, and I have no doubt the rear ones will. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe while you're here. I really appreciate it.